So, what do you need to do to earn the title, The Light of the Exile, Meor Hagola? Good question, right? Anybody applying for the job? So there have been many great people in our Jewish history, before and after him, yet there's only one person that I know of who's named, whose title is called Meor Hagola, the light of the exile. His name is Rabbeinu Gershom, Gershom ben Yehuda. And he lived in Germany and in France. Uh, he was born in the year 960, about a thousand sixty years ago. He was coined Rabbeinu Gershom Meor Hagola. What is he famous for? What did he do that earned him that, earned him that title? So, in the Talmud, in the, in the halachic literature, Rabbeinu Gershom actually established many, many rules and regulations, laws and enactments. One of the most famous ones that I remember growing up as a child was that he established that a person is not allowed to read another person's letters or mail. Privacy. Respect another's privacy. But in the Talmud, in the, in the halachic world, even for those who are not so familiar with other of his teachings and enact, enactments and regulations, he's most famous for two marriage laws. Number one is that in the Ashkenazic world, it took hold that a person, a Jew, is only allowed to marry one wife. You cannot take another wife on in addition to the wife you already have. Number two, the other rule that he enacted was also marriage related, was that a person cannot divorce a wife against her will. If she wants to divorce him, then he can divorce her. Of course, he should divorce her if she wants to. But if she doesn't want the divorce, a person cannot send away his wife against her will. So those are the two rules. And the Rebbe talks about this in a beautiful, very creative talk. And the Rebbe discusses that in all of the literature, he's called the Ma'or Hagola, the light of the exile, mainly because of his saving the marriages and his rules on, on marriage. Now the Rebbe takes this a step further and says that everything in the material world that we have is really a mirror of what goes on in the spiritual realm. And a marriage between husband and wife truly is a marriage between or represents or manifests itself below here because of our marriage between God and the Jewish people. So God is the husband, we are the wife, we're married. And says the Rebbe, so too, just like Rabbi Gershom created, hello, these, these two laws that a person cannot divorce his wife unless she wants it, the Rebbe draws a parallel to this and many other, and a few other beautiful areas of marriage, as we'll soon see. And the Rebbe says, we are the wife. We don't want to separate from God. A Jew cannot and will not, and doesn't want to separate ever from God Almighty. Therefore, God cannot separate from us. And so too, he, the husband, cannot take another wife, cannot take another spouse in addition to us. Just like down below, we can't take another spouse. So says the Rebbe that this parallel in marriage finds itself in many ways in the marriage between God and the Jewish people, represented by the marriage between us and our spouses over here. So, the Rebbe says that about a thousand years ago, when the exile was becoming harsher, our relationship with God was being strained. Therefore, the rules up in heaven needed to change. And God said, oh, I need more rules. I can't send my children away. 
I, God says, cannot leave my children to the wilderness. I can't leave my wife alone, my spouse, the Jewish people. And therefore, down below, it manifests itself in a rule, in a halachic ruling between husband and wife in the Jewish law. That's one idea. The Rebbe says, but moving on, we have the biblical requirements of marriage, of the responsibilities that a husband has to his wife. And they are She'era, Kesusa, Ve'oinasa. The Rebbe refers to something very spiritual and abstract. I'm just going to mention it and we could do our more in-depth learning later on. But She'era means her food. A husband is responsible to sustain all of his wife's needs. His wife's singular needs. Her food, She'era, her food. Kisusa, her clothing. Inasa, and her marital intimacy. Desires and requirements. So, says the Rebbe, these three things, he referred to a Hasidic discourse by that Tzemach Tzedek, it talks about how these are really representing three levels of God's relationship with our world. There's a level of a flow of light called Or, and then there's Shefa, which is a flow of actual material energy. Light doesn't have its own sustenance, substance. It's just a reflection of the source, and a flow is an actual something that comes down from above. The Rebbe says that so too, these three requirements, responsibilities that a husband has for his wife, the food represents an internal kind of a light that comes down from heaven because food is digested. The clothing represents an external light in which God creates the world, animates the world, and the marital intimacy represents an internal flow, a connection, a physical connection that God has with this world. So, says the Rebbe, we need to strengthen here in our marriages below. We need to strengthen our relationship with our spouses. And that too, in turn, will strengthen our relationship in our marriage with God. And the Rebbe continues the parallel and says that the Talmud talks about a marriage or a, an engagement soon to be a marriage between a husband and wife. And the Talmud says that if the woman, the wife, is working in a horribly smelling place, like a leather tannery, where they're working animal skins and it stinks to high heavens, the Talmud ex explains and exclaims that to the husband or to the would-be, to the groom, to the chassan, it smells like fragrant spices, like perfumes. Love conquers when you love someone. So the Rebbe says so too. God looks down upon us and if we're not exactly in the best space in our relationship with God and things don't smell perfect all the time, says the Rebbe, God mirrors what happens below and he loves us anyway and he takes us out of that tanner, tannery and he brings us to a perfume shop and he makes it smell good and he helps us on the journey. The Rebbe continued and said, realistically speaking, until Mashiach comes, our marriage is not complete. We haven't consummated our marriage with God until Mashiach comes. So now we're engaged to be married. The Rebbe says that it is the custom among humans for grooms, for chasanim, a chasan, to gift the wife, give her gifts, many gifts, nice gifts. And the Rebbe says, the gifts are meant to be kefi yecholta, u kefi, I'm sorry, kefi yecholto, u kefi yechusa. According to the tradition, the gifts have to be according to his ability. As much as he's able to give, that's how much he should give her. And also, based on 
her lineage. If she's of a higher lineage order, then she should get more, etc. Says the Rebbe, so too in our relationship with God. God is the chassan. He needs to gift us with everything. And He can. According to His ability, God can gift everyone with everything. There's no limits to what He can gift us. And we are God's children. We are the, our lineage is powerful. We are the descendants of Avraham, Yitzchak, Yaakov, Sarah, Rivka, Rachel, and Leah. So we deserve the best. The Rebbe says further that if the wedding is delayed, the Jewish law about this, if the wedding is delayed and it is the husband's responsibility that was delayed because of the husband for whatever reason, says the Rebbe, then even before the wedding, especially from the start, the date the wedding was meant to be, the husband is required, according to Jewish law, to sustain his wife and give her everything she needs, possibly materially and spiritually, even before they're married, during their engagement. So too says the Rebbe, that God Almighty, the husband, is delaying our wedding. He alone can make it happen, can make the wedding happen, right now, right here. And because he's not doing it, and the Rebbe quoted a Midrash that said that the, one of the reasons the wedding is delayed because the Jewish people sometimes are distracted by the Yetzer Hara, by the evil inclination that's in the world. And the Midrash itself says that God regrets creating that distraction for us. So God made the problems, He can take them away, and He delayed the wedding. God deserves God is required to give us everything we need in the most luxurious manner, the way only God can, until the wedding happens. And then the Rebbe said a very funny thing. He said, in these days, today in the court systems, if there's a husband who's having issues with his wife, and he's on the fence, he's not sure if he's going to go back to his wife or not, his wife and children, so a judge in the Justice Department, marital, maternity, um, will sometimes require the husband a very high dose of uh, alimony and child support to encourage the husband to go a certain way. Make, pick your choice. Are you going to take care and pay more than you can? Or are you going to go back to your family and take care of them and support them and love them? Says the Rebbe, parallel is only partial because in this case, a husband can choose to pay or leave. But according to what we learned at the start, Rabbeinu Gershom Me'or Hagola, he enacted this law that a husband cannot leave his wife if she doesn't want him to. So too, God, the husband, cannot leave his children because we don't want him to. And therefore, he has to come back to us and get married. And then we'll have, with Mashiach, we'll have the chuppah and the wedding and the sheva brachas and we'll all sing and dance and we'll say mazel tov. May it happen today. God bless you.